Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Motive to be Productive. I'm Dario, your host. And today, it's the first day of spring, so Noruz Mubarak. And I'm very honored to be hosting two talented, incredible ladies joining me from Rome, Italy, are Leila and Sara Shirvani. Hello, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Oh, well, thank you very much for inviting us. Very well, thank you. It's very nice to be here. We're enjoying our second Nauru's in lockdown, but it's <laughs> fine. We're enjoying it. Exactly. This, it's been, oh my God, it's been the second Nauru's in lockdown. Time flies. Second in a row. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I wanted to say Nauru's to Mubarak. Happy, happy New Persian Year. I yeah. wish you ladies all the best. And a wonderful Noruz. So, how how's the second Noruz in lockdown? Let's yeah. start from there. Well, I mean, it's a good thing we've got <laughs> each other to bear with. Yes. I mean, somehow we have we have fun at home, although we can't see. Um, well, this year friends. is better actually than last year because last year we didn't even get to buy any flowers yeah. or anything. Flower shops were closed. Flower shops. Oh my were god! <laughs> yeah, and we managed to get on Amazon just one bunch of flowers, and it was so sad. And this year, well, things are a bit better. So we've got some flowers and well, we have lots of flowers, lots of food. Our dad is cooking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Two years ago, we had our aunt from LA, actually, our Iranian aunt. And it was nice because we had a huge party. I mean, we had a really nice yeah. Nuruz. We celebrated Nuruz even with our Italian friends because they know about Nuruz and they, they love it. So we had a big party, but it was two years ago. <laughs> so Time flies, time flies and time it's flies. Fun. I hope I hope this entire COVID situation eventually you know, goes away. And people, all of us will get to go back to normal lives. But until then, you know, it's it's how it is. And so, again, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. It's a pleasure to thank be you. hosting thank you. you. Thank you. Let me let me start. Let me start from. So, how we usually start our first question is by uh, asking our guests about their passion. So, how it from where it started, right? So. I know that both of you, um, Leila, I know, I know you started from a very young age. I know you, Sarah, started from a very young age. You both are super talented and have won several awards, many awards. So let's start from you, Leila. So from what age did you actually start to learn how to play the cello? And from where did you realize that cello is going to actually be your career, your career, you will be a musician playing the instrument you love? Well, um, it's a difficult question because I don't know when I actually realized it was going to dominate my whole life. But for sure, um, it was a sound I was very familiar with probably before I was born because uh, both my parents played the cello and when my mom was pregnant, she played the cello. So it was probably one of the very first sounds I heard. And when I was very young, I was maybe about three, I asked my parents to buy me a cello. I really, I wanted to study the cello. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's strange. I suppose when you're small, I mean, whatever you see feels like normal. So I, I thought it was absolutely normal to play the cello. My parents say that when I went to school, I was really disappointed because I thought everyone in the world played the cello. And I suddenly realized my friends didn't know what the cello was. Um, so probably it was just part of me from the very beginning. I think I started getting really, really um, involved in in music when I did my first concert, when I did my first, it was after a competition that I won that I actually performed. And I think it was there that I realized how much I liked performing. But it was, what, I think it was very natural really. What age was that? What age was- I was the, six. I was six years old, yes. When I actually did you, the first time. How did, you, how did you feel when you, when you won your first award? I think I was very shocked. I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I was, I was a very shy child. Um, 
I remember I didn't want to go and because I won a money prize and they asked me to sign to be able to get my money prize. <laughs> and I was, I, I think I probably didn't even, I only knew how to write my name in capital letters and I was really ashamed. <laughs> I was very shy. And I remember being afraid of that, being asking my mom, please, you go and sign for me. <laughs> um, but apart from that, I felt really comfortable performing. So, yes, I it's think when a lot of people when they're six years old they don't even know what signing is and it's incredible when when um when you at such a young age win an award and they say it, it gives you i think a feeling of prestige to sign something and like that's it i won right yes i mean i think when you're small you're very naive um i mean the thing i really remember from when I was six from my first competition was a little mouse which I found under a chair under a bench outside and it was so nice I was I, I want to go back to that mouse and play with it so I mean that's it's my main memory from that experience just to say I mean how <laughs> how naive I was I, I don't think I was thinking about the prestige really I enjoyed performing it was what I liked uh, but as far as everything else was concerned I was a child just a normal child wonderful thank you so now uh, let's go to sarah and you also started playing from a very very young age and you yeah. also just like your sister Layla, won awards can you please share with us some of the details about that well i actually started playing the piano with my mother because the idea was for me to play the violin but i didn't want to play an instrument uh, that no one played in the home because I didn't want to go to a teacher that wasn't my mother because I was very shy as well. So I used to see my sister practicing with my father and I wanted to do something with my mother. So I decided to play the piano because, well, four cellos were too many cellos. So I decided to change the rules. So I decided to play the piano and I started when I was very small, but then I think, well, we lived in the same home so basically our story is actually very similar and I was so used to hearing music from morning to evening really because I used to hear well my father my mother and their pupils and well of course Layla because I grew up listening to her rehearsals and her concerts and I used to go to many of her competitions when I was small and well I realized that even I wanted to be a musician and even I wanted to do something similar to that. And well, even I did my first competition when I was about six and a half. But I think when you're so small, you don't even realize what a competition is. So you don't feel the pressure. Uh, it's very strange because when, you, when you're big, you realize what a competition is and maybe you, get, you, you can get anxious or people can get very easily anxious. But when you're so small, I just thought it was fun. I was going to go and play and then it went well. And even I played in a concert and I thought it was incredibly, it was so much fun. I have such good memories of that first competition. Wonderful. So let me ask you this. So since you both have um, grew up in a family of musicians, how did it feel when you constantly hear each other practicing? But because when you're practicing, you make mistakes and you <laughs> have to practice and practice and practice. Share yeah. with us some of those stories, those memories. It's I, hilarious. I because... think that <laughs> any cellist in future who has to, who ends up playing the cello with my sister accompanying them is very unlucky. <laughs> no, it's uh, because she's terrible. <laughs> no, it's, it's hilarious because it, sometimes... Whoever's practicing, and you always think, well, no one's listening to me. I'm just practicing a new piece, and I don't really know it. And then you hear someone knocking on the door. Look, actually, there was a mistake there. Just make sure you correct it. And then they go. <laughs> well, sometimes when my sister's practicing, um, my father, well, he acts as if he's having an afternoon rest. So he's lying down like this on the bed. And then he, he storms in, and he says, that was terrible. Make sure you practice that Bar passage. 57. Did you read that correctly? <laughs> yeah so we all act as if we don't hear anything but then we're all but making sure she is particularly strict with <laughs> cellists because she's surrounded by them so she hears she hears us she hears students she hears other cellists she hears cellist friends so she's 
terrible. The, she knows all it, the methods of our... <laughs> It's amazing. So um, I'm just saying it from a, a like a friendly, um, looking at it from a friendly perspective. Has it ever occurred when you try to correct each other and that correction has turned into like a maybe small argument or something like, why are you correcting me so many times? Oh, it gets annoying. Yes, <laughs> it gets very annoying. <laughs> but it usually between us, it doesn't turn into an argument. No, but we it's, sometimes, it's funny. It's funny. I mean, we, we sometimes do get, I mean, in a nice way, we get not annoyed with our parents, but like, I mean, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't matter where my father is, but he's listening to me. <laughs> And so I ask him, please, just let me read well, it. It does happen that we choose the right time of day when we know that no one's there to practice certain things. That, that's very important. That's very important. Like, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Now, um, going forward, I wanted to ask you about um, basically the duo that you formed. But before that, um, if you would like to share, I wanted to ask, where did you study music? Like, how was the evolution process? Let's start with you, uh, Leila. So you, I, I, when I was um, basically reading about you, you had a transition from London then to Rome, right? Would you like to share with us? Yes. I mean, basically, I always studied the cello with my father, who taught in, a conserv taught in various conservatories in Italy. But... Um, I actually never went to a conservatory in Italy. So I studied with him from when I was very small. And then eventually I actually uh, graduated in London at the London College of Music. And eventually I became a fellow of the London College of Music. And after that, I came back to Rome and I studied with uh, the great cellist and composer Giovanni Sollima in Rome at the Santa Cecilia Academy. And that was very, very inspiring. I studied with him for three years and eventually I got my master's degree there as well. And of course, I mean, well, you know, I mean, when you study, when you play a musical instrument, you actually never finish studying. I mean, you, you practice your whole life and you study for your whole life really. So, I mean, even when you're 80, you're a student somehow. Um, so I, yes, I, I never finished studying and I never interrupted my, my musical relationship with, with both of them, really. I mean, they, they were my teachers and I mean, somehow they still are, they still are my teachers. Wonderful. Thank you. And, and actually, when, when you mentioned that you people will never finish learning music, the ones who, who are in love with it, it reminded me that there are a few rare, I think, professions where you, you're continuously learning and learning and learning. Because a lot of people, they go to school and whatever they study, they're, they're done, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're done with academics and studying. But it's one of the rare professions, such as being a musician, that's, I think... And on another level, it's different and you have to continuously um, study and study. Does it, does it ever get frustrating? Do you ever feel tired? But if you do, like, how do you refresh yourself? How do you get your energy back? Well, I mean, of course it's tiring. In a way, it can be frustrating, as you said, because I suppose, in a way, perhaps if you study law, it's just any example. I mean, once you've learned what you have to learn, then that's it, you have it. Whereas with music, you can study like mad. But if you don't study, if you don't practice for a week, then you your existence serves no purpose. So, um Yes, that's what's hard about it, especially if you're a performing artist. You have to practice every day. I mean, every day you have to uh, have many doubts about yourself and you have to keep on studying and keep on practicing. I mean, I suppose in a way we're used to it. Yes. I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, we have periods when we practice very hard and we have other periods when we also do other things. We teach, we have 
new projects. We think we think about other things. Um, so I'm gonna I, jump into your projects later. I'm, I, I, I've, I've, I'm gonna jump into them later because they're incredible what you ladies are doing. And so, but before that, I wanted to ask you, um, Sarah, would you like to share with us your musical journey? Yes. Well, as I said, I started playing the piano with my mother. And then I eventually um, could continued studying the piano with my teacher, who is still my teacher, Giorgia Tomassi, uh, because as Leila said, you never stop learning and you never stop practicing and studying. And she's such a great pianist. She's so inspiring and I still see her on a daily basis. I mean, I weekly uh, basis, weekly basis. <laughs> I meant to say, sorry, weekly basis, because it's so nice to work with her and anything, anything new we have to learn. She's such a great musician. And I actually got um, my degree uh, from the London College of Music as well. And it was actually quite a strange story because I was supposed to get my degree just the same way Leila did. But then uh, all this COVID business came through and they said, well, no, all exams and degrees have been postponed. And so it was terrible. Uh, <laughs> but then they eventually found a way of doing all exams and degrees online, which was quite stressful. It wasn't very nice. But then I suppose we didn't really have an alternative. So basically I got my degree during lockdown and, but it was great. I mean, it was that positive thing during lockdown. I mean, many people really suffered so much during lockdown, but to be able to get a degree during lockdown was, well, something, something positive, I suppose. She was Congrats. determined to do it. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, you both are determined individuals that's why you're very successful at what you're doing and congratulations to you for getting your degree um for me i'm also a college student and oh. it's very um difficult to study on zoom like yeah. basically they say zoom university like the terminology it's very difficult to sit behind the computer for eight hours and and i see Sometimes myself, I, I, I'll admit it here on camera, and sometimes my uh, fellow classmates, we get tired, we get mm -hmm. bored. It doesn't mean that we don't like the subject, it just from the whole situation. But not to make this lovely interview uh, dramatic, let's jump back in. <laughs> let's jump back in to the journey of um, forming the stool. So you ladies formed the started the Shirvani sisters. Would you like to share with us how did you decide to do that? What was the reason behind it? Well, I don't know if it actually started at some point because when I was very small, we, we started playing together immediately because even when I was so small, I couldn't even reach the pedals with my feet, the pedals of the piano. And we started playing together. We used to do very easy pieces when I was very small. And then it just went on and on and it became a stable duo. I mean, it's something, I mean, we're sisters. So yeah, we can, I don't think we can remember when it started. Of no. course, she's, well, Sarah is seven years younger than me. So I'm the old one. <laughs> and uh, when she started playing the piano, I was already, I mean, I was big. I mean, I was much older than her, of course. But I, I remember when she was really small, she, I often, for example, when I needed a pianist to come with me to a competition, she would say, I would say, come with me. And she would. So, um, yes, I think it has always existed. Perhaps it wasn't called the Shirvani yes. Sisters. It started in a very natural way. So then we eventually realized that it was a duo so we gave it a name and we decided okay so we are the Shivani sisters yeah but people kept on saying it's so nice that you're sisters and that you play together and that you also I mean you're also friends you also have um such a nice relationship mm -hmm. so that's when we we realized that instead of saying Leila and Sarah Shivani we should be called the Shivani sisters and that's it that's <laughs> what I was trying to point out to like when did you um, decide to basically rename this duo, basically to rename it Shirvani Sisters, right? To, to give a name to it, to yeah. give 
And then you, because you created an Instagram page and mm -hmm. then that's basically part of branding in a sense, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that was probably about five years ago, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, we just, well, everyone was so enthusiastic. It was so nice. We got so much feedback, but we just decided to make it real and we gave it a name, but it was all very natural, really. This um, relationship, this good relationship that you ladies have with each other, um, what are some of the, what, what do you think that, are some of the reasons behind the strong bonds that you have? Well, I think uh, there are several reasons. Probably the first one is music, because we grew up with music and uh, music makes, creates very strong bonds. Uh, the second one is probably, the thing, I mean, in general, we're a very united family. Um, we somehow, I mean, we, we live abroad because, of course, our dad is, Iranian and our mum is English so we have zero family here just none and part of our family we never met uh, part of our family yes we, we saw but perhaps once a year or twice a year mm -hmm. so I mean when a family lives abroad somehow it's a very it becomes a very strong family I mean it, that makes it a very united family so in mm -hmm. general that's it's what we are even with our parents we have a very um a very strong relationship yeah um having said that i think it was probably yes probably music i mean probably the fact of sharing exactly the very same experiences the same uh friendships and having the same needs i think that was definitely part of it mm, you you mentioned sorry I don't know what she thinks. No, yeah, I think I, I, I agree absolutely. Yes, I agree. Well, I mean, even apart from music, we we get on very well together, even for things that have nothing to do with music. So, I mean, I think well, our characters are actually quite different, but they compensate very well. So there are some moments in which uh, she helps me with many things, and then I help her with other things, and we. I mean, it's very rare for we, us to argue over something. It's it's strange to say something like that. But we we sometimes have the same dreams. I swear <laughs> that's true. It's frightening, but it's true. We have had the same dreams. Oh, my God. You reminded me of something. So with a friend, we were, we were in one of these um, online applications, Clubhouse. I don't know if you've heard of the name or not. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. I'll I'll ex I'll share more details with you later about that. But um, so we were with this friend, and three four times consecutively we said the same things. Like our like our minds are connected. And then now when you mentioned that you have the same dreams, it reminded me of that. And that's that's both incredible and terrifying. Yes, it is terrifying. Yes. And it's so strange because many people even tend not to believe us. But basically what happened is the next morning, I told my dad about my dream and she told my our mom about our dream. But in separate moments. In separate moments. So I didn't know that she told one parent and she didn't know that I told the other parent. And then at lunchtime, we all sat down together and I spoke about my dream and she I saw her face. She just went white and she <laughs> said, pardon? And that's when we realized that we basically had the same dream. Do you, besides music, do you share other activities with each other? Do you do other activities with each other? Something that you would like, you feel comfortable to talk about on camera? Well, I mean, I think in a way we share just about everything. Uh, we go out together. I mean, after a year of lockdown, I can't think of many activities. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's but, but we, we travel together, we go out together, we share the same friends. I mean, of course, she has her own friends, I have my own, but I mean, we have many friends in common. Mm -hmm. And we love doing the same things. I mean, when we go out, we don't even decide where to go because we, get, we all basically like doing the same things. Uh, of course, after a year of lockdown, I've even forgotten what you normally do when you go out, like have an ice cream or something. But uh, at the moment, it's just 
being home, but even when we're home together, I mean, whether it's watching the same program on television or just spending the day together, we, we do many, yes, many exactly. things together. Incredible, incredible. So you mentioned travel. Let me ask you this. Where, where, where do you ladies like to travel? Where's your favorite destination? Well, it's a difficult question. <laughs> it's a difficult question. I like to go to Australia. I haven't been. <laughs> Australia. Yeah. Well, let's say that. What about you, Sarah? Well, where I would like, oh goodness, I don't know. There's so many places I would like to go to. It's just so pick one. Just pick one for our for our audience. It's, so these questions, I ask these questions because, from you know the the serious part of the talk, sometimes. Uh, I tend to make it more fun as well, try to combine both elements. And I think it's very interesting for people to know some of these details, to get more familiar with you. Yes, that's why I brought it up. You know, you don't, you don't have to share, but you know, you can just pick like a random place or whatever you, you, you want to visit. Well, if I had to pick, I would love to go to Indonesia because she's been, and I haven't been there and I saw some amazing pictures. And I fell in love with it, even if I've never been there. From You know, when, when you see something amazing, then you start watching documentaries and videos, and I realised what an amazing place it is. Yes, and also I think, I mean, we're very fond of nature, and we're very fond of fruit, tropical fruit, so it would be really nice to be to spend some time I would love to in go. a tropical place. Yes, 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 I would love to travel and go to Indonesia. And all the animals, all the fantastic fruit, uh, fantastic culture, yes. And the sea. <laughs> I I was looking for something in regards to the nature and environment, and you brought it up. Thank you so much. So coming back to your um, dynamic duo, you've recently launched a project called the Eco Academy Project. Congratulations on that. And would you like to jump into details on what that project is? Yes, well, I mean, uh, as we said, uh, we're very fond of music, but we're also very keen on teaching music. Our father taught music for his whole life. So, I mean, we've always shared this dream of opening our own academy sometime. And as we are really very, very fond of nature, um, we gave it lots of thought, you know, I mean, in lockdown, we, we didn't really know what to do. And so many horrible things happened. So we, we had to think about something positive. So we spent so much time together. We, we really started brainstorming. And in the end, we came up with this idea. We thought we need a special academy. We need something different. We need an eco academy, which is basically, I mean, instead of having a huge and massive building with everyone playing inside it and everyone disturbing each other, um, we're going to buy a piece of land we've actually already put a deposit on it and we would like to create these little wooden structures which will be eco-friendly with solar panels because we have lots of sunshine here and basically in each little house uh, students could study a different musical instrument and this land is beautiful there are lots of trees there's a fig tree so for example the cello house could be just underneath the fig tree and students could come and enjoy the fresh air the beautiful place the eco-sustainable place and pick figs in their break that's <laughs> the idea of it basically it's and it, incredible congratulations please continue please continue you know, sorry yeah, to interrupt I you say that a very important point is our concert hall because of course we also want to invite artists to give concerts and um, it will be a glass concert hall. A greenhouse. Yeah, a greenhouse, really. Yes, yes exactly. Because, we, I mean, obviously, uh, since it's an eco-academy, you're not going to cut any trees or anything. No. So in order not to disturb nature, we're, we're thinking of a greenhouse. And it can be a, an auditorium with all these trees inside it. And, well... We're trying to do our best. Uh, let's say at the a moment, stage amongst trees, basically. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's idea. what I wanted to ask. Like, how are you going to do that? And with with glass, you mentioned, are you going to use glass as well? Yeah. Like, I'm not. I don't want to ask something, you know, proprietary or secret. But but just um, as much as you can, like, share with us how 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 are you planning to achieve that natural sound system? 
Well, I mean, of course, we are going to work on it. We've uh, we've got a, a fantastic architect who is helping us, and for sure, we will have to do some research and look into it. But a lot of work is going into it, obviously, because it's it's not a very easy thing. We've had many questions on how are you going to do it, and isn't it going to be too hot inside there and everything? So it's not easy. But but the instruments we play, I mean, you know, they're analogic. They're not nothing is amplified so somehow I mean it is in a way it's the sound of nature that's what mm -hmm. I think I mean the cello is made out of wood so I mean it's a natural sound and um, it isn't an excessive volume or anything so I think it should probably work out I mean some experiments have been have been made have been done uh, lots of research will have to go into it but we're working on it I mean that's our dream that's our idea no that's it's and it's, it's a beautiful it, it is a beautiful, beautiful dream. And I, I honestly, I wish that at some point in near future, after the COVID thing ends, I, I'd be able to travel to Italy and see oh, your yeah. auditorium. It's, 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 it's going to be great. And I, and I wish oh, you yeah. ladies the best. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Going into the um, conclusion of this interview, I wanted to ask you this question. So imagine now someone sitting and watching this interview and they'll say, I want to be like Layla. I want to be like Sarah. I want to pursue my passion the same way they're doing. I want to be musicians like them. And I want to ask this individually from you, ladies. So from your perspective, um, Leila, what is the advice that you give to a younger person, especially a younger lady who wants to be like you? And then we'll, I'll come to you, Sarah, and I would like you to give your advice and perspective to a young lady who wants to be like you. You know, to it, yeah. who someone like who sees you and says, I want to be like Sarah. So let's start from you later. Well, I mean, I think the most important thing is to be yourself. So, I mean, it's going to work out if you try not to be like anybody else, but just to be like yourself and have lots of faith in yourself. I think. Um, to be honest, I mean, I think the main thing is you have to be very sincere, whatever you do. I mean, whether it's um, playing music, I mean, when you play music, apart from, well, of course, I mean, you've got to be technically prepared, you've got to practice hard, you've got to have very good ideas, but then when you actually perform for an audience, you've got to be sincere, otherwise no one's going to believe you. And if you are not convinced, you're not going to convince anyone else either. So, I mean, that is my first bit of advice. And I think, um, well, of course, whatever you do these days, you have to be extremely determined. You have to be very determined, but you have, yes, I mean, I think my answer is you really have to believe in yourself more than mm -hmm. in anybody else. So the only way to convince other people is to convince yourself first. And if you don't believe in it, no one else is going to believe in you. Thank you, Leila. So um, I, maybe, so that was, that was a great answer. So when, when I mentioned, like, if someone wants to be like you, um, maybe I um, said that a little bit incorrectly. What I meant is someone who sees your talent as a cellist and says, I want to be a cellist and I want to play the cello. That, that's what I meant. But you, you gave an amazing answer. Would you like to add to that and, and give your advice to someone who particularly wants to play the cello? Well, I mean, my advice is, I think it's very similar. You have to be very determined. You have to make sure you don't give up as soon as something goes wrong, because many things will go wrong, but that's perfectly normal. And of course, I mean, playing the cello uh, requires discipline. Mm -hmm. It requires lots of hard work mm -hmm. and uh, 
it requires courage somehow because I mean you have to be courageous if you choose to study an instrument which takes I mean 10 years in college so of course you've got to be very determined uh, but at the same time I think that you have to uh, bear in mind that if you choose to study the cello you you're actually very lucky because you're going to do something you, you really like for the rest of your life so lots of determination that's what I would say Thank you, thank you, Leila. So, uh, Sarah, now um, I wanted to ask you the same question that I asked Leila. So, what is your advice? Well, I think uh, being both musicians, uh, I think that the advice is very similar. I think that um, many people, uh, for example, say, oh, you're so talented and how lucky you are to be able to play the piano, play the cello so well. But actually, uh, sometimes people don't realize how much work there is behind anything we do. So obviously you can be talented and obviously many things can help, but the practice is terribly important. And some people don't realize how many hours you've got to practice and how easy it is to get demoralized and think, oh, I'm never going to manage to do this or that. And it's happened to me many times. Or I continuously think, okay, I'm just going to give up on this. I can't do this or I can't do that. And I think another very important thing is to surround yourself with people who actually believe in you. And, to, and it's not something that... It doesn't always happen, even the people you work with or your teacher or anyone, they have to really believe in you and they have to recognize, well, if your talent, if you can say something like that, or they have to really help you. And you can sometimes meet people that try to, I don't want to say destroy you, but it can be very easy to get demoralized. Not and help I you, right? <laughs> Yes, it has actually happened. I mean, you, it's, I think many people sometimes see like music as um, a very nice hobby or something easy to achieve and it's not. And you have to really practice. So don't give up is my piece of advice. I mean, if things don't happen immediately, you have to practice a lot and believe in yourself and surround yourself from, with people that believe in you. Leila and Sara Shirvani, I would like to thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining me in this interview. It was a pleasure to talk to you ladies. I learned a lot from you. I'm sure our audience yes. will learn a lot from you when they see this interview. I wish you a great new year. Again, happy Nowruz. Nowruz to Mubarak. Salah Khubi Dashta Bashin. And I hope that we get the chance to meet in person. Thank you very much. Thank Take you care. So much. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for Thank having you us. Thank you so Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram page, and share this video with your friends. Also, if you have extra time, please check out our other videos. Thank you and see you next time.